Hey, what's up everybody? Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I started with my minifigure collection, the way it first looked and how over time I developed a few techniques and things to sort of start keeping track of all my minifigs. As you know by now it's a few thousand and so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of how it goes from this. Basically just a few random figs through the identifying process and then um, bagging them, numbering them all the way to something like this where basically uh, these are all Harry Potter, these are all city figs. This is just basically how I store them after a while or if I'm you know, moving or thinking about uh, changing a few things around in terms of what figs to display or not. So basically, you may start differently. I started someone forgot a minifigure in my place and that's sparked everything from my childhood again and, and, and it was like a, a holy grail and I was like whoa and it all just started coming back and so I started collecting from that moment on and so I guess the first tip I would give is to learn how to identify each theme and sub theme if you're getting into it and then that is not easy at the beginning I have to say there's a bunch of people that are so much better at it than I am I am still learning every day even though I've done it for 10 years but it helps if you are kind of able to ID minifix and as you do it more and more it will come easier and easier so I have a few sort of example pit they're like just from the pit a bunch of minifix here these are duplicates or um, just neglected figs that are not part of my collection because I already have them or I haven't gotten to them yet or they're not quite sorted through but so these are just a few random figs however you get them it may be in your drawer from your childhood you may buy them used on eBay or whatever it may just be whatever so let's just think about these as a bunch of random minifigs and the, the first thing I do is I go through and I identify and I can already tell, for example, this one is definitely a mechanic from the early Star Wars uh, theme. I know this one is, for example, missing the top hat, but it's also from the advent calendar from the Star Wars. And so you basically go through each fig and try to see what is it, what theme could it belong to. This, for example, here is a pilot from an old city it's not quite that old because it's the newer gray on the legs but you can look on Bricklink and I'll link everything that I'm talking about down below in the description so there's a, a, a guy on reddit that posted this really cool guide on how to identify specific parts of specific minifigs so in this case it's relatively easy because you would just type in blue jacket and plane logo and then you could probably find it fairly quickly. Other minifigs are much trickier to find uh, out what theme they belong to and so forth. So it's kind of, uh, I mean, the city, fireman, female, relatively easy in some of these cases. This is some kind of birthday hair. But over time, I gotten really good at another Star Wars, at um, identifying female scientist, I think, or businesswoman identifying specific figs and then finding appropriate homes for them. And back then I could it all fit it all in one small sort of fishing tackle box. It was like a, and I made little dividers in it with foam board and that was all I needed. And that was perfectly fine for the 50 or so first minifigs that I had. It was maybe 10 years ago, the beginning of the CMFs were just happening. I had the gorilla suit guy and a bunch of other sort of figs that got me really excited early on. And then over time, things started to get out of hand and I had way too many. And uh, I started dumping them all loose like this into a Ziploc basically in that city. And I, at that point, I didn't even have individual tags per minifig. That, that came sort of like a few years later as that got out of hand and I had like 400 or 500 figs, big gallon Ziploc bags full of them. And then, you know, attachments fall off, hair falls off, hats fall off, stuff doesn't really stick together and belong to the fig that it was with. I'm like a stickler when it comes to all the original um, stuff with it. And so, 
I needed to find another solution to pack each individual minifigure into an individual bag, but we'll get to that in one second. As I was collecting and gathering more and more figures, some you just purchase because they're like white whale minifigs, we just buy them on Bricklink again, I'll link that below. And then at some point I started keeping track of them on Brickset. I'll again link that below, but Brickset is a fantastic site, I think, where you can perfectly manage and look and check out your collection, including a collection analysis page where you know exactly the percentage of each theme that you have and you can check what you have 100% of and you can list say all castle and then you can list by a castle you own or castle you're still missing and there's so many different cool ways of uh, checking your collection against what's really out there i think by now it's maybe 11,000 minifigs or something like that so this is a never-ending battle of course trying to own every single one and i don't have a specific favorite theme i may have a little bit of a favorite in terms of what i grew up with which was classic uh black falcon and the classic castle around that time and then obviously space because i grew up in the 80s and so uh that was my jam and i really loved it so i do have like a, a you know a soft spot uh, in my heart for that but in general i collect every single minifig from every theme uh, across all the decades from 76 or whatever that first one came out that still had no arms uh, to today. I am not really too keen on the Friends uh, minifig so much, but I, I love all regular minifigs and all the themes that have, come, that have come out today. They just announced the Monkey Kid. I ordered a set just to check it out. Um, yeah, but I value them equally, but over the years, I gathered so much additional loose minifig specific parts that I uh, bought this fishing tackle box. I'll try and find that out and link it below as well. But what we have here is the top part is all hats by different themes. This is basically a mixed hat kind of bag. This is more uh, racing helmets, space helmets. These kind of helmets they have, um, these are all the visors um, that go with it. So I can always, if I get another batch of used minifigs and I've washed them and they're all clean and everything, then I'll go through and I'm like, oh cool, I could replace the visor here and this fig is missing a head or just a brown hair piece or whatever. So below the hat row comes the hair. So uh, these are, mm, you know, male hair, the classic hair and then the, the female hair and so forth, shoulder stuff. And then we go into the um, ha uh, sorry heads. So I got a bunch of heads uh, to replace anything that has chew marks and stuff like that, because I do buy a lot of used minifigs uh, to reassemble them and put them back together the way they originally came out in whatever random set in whatever random, you know, 80s, 90s, 2000s, whatever year. But this is basically what I use to put them back together. Then there's flesh colored heads, uh, female heads, stuff like that. There's a few empty ones right now because I have to move. And so I was basically uh, putting a few things away. But this is sort of like the rough rundown on how over the years I had more and more stuff that I needed to find homes for. Um, but let's go back to how it all first started when a bag like this without individual uh, mini bags was just way too much for me to really figure out what I really had, what I was missing. And this is, just bear in mind, this is a process that never ends. So there will always be something better or a newer idea or something that you need to come up with to sort of uh, make work what you currently have and the space that you have. And obviously there's rest restrictions like that, but it's a never ending process of improvements. If you have any tips or anything, uh, how you do it, please leave some comments uh, down below. I'm super interested in finding out. I am so far the only crazy guy that I know that has uh, a crazy collection like this and is trying to keep track of it. However, after a while, I found these cool little bags here. Um, I buy them on Uline. Again, I'll link it below. These will fit 
99% of the fakes. Obviously, there's a few Ninjago ones that are taller or some superhero stuff with wings and whatnot in the back, but most of them, most of them will fit this. Uh, here's a Rebel Trooper, so it, uh, just as an example real quick, you, it, it's really nice, it's really sweet how it fits. And then up top, you can just write the BrickLink ID that I usually always add when I, sh when I show off some of my figs in my mini fig videos. And that's how I can identify which fig is what. And that will basically uh, allow me to quickly identify and or find specific figs from a specific theme. So like I said, this is Harry Potter, but I have Lord of the Rings, like each one that I have more than say 50 to 100 off of, will already get like a big bag. I have practically all of SpongeBob, pretty much all the Simpsons. And so um, that's just basically how I started keeping track of it. I'll show you real quick. Let me just move this over here. So this is the current Harry Potter bag that I have, and this is how it kind of looks um, inside. These are the bags, that's how they look. It's pretty straightforward, right? So, <laughs> cool, by chance, two different runs, but I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. These are some really sweet old school ones, but that's how I do it right now in terms of keeping track of what I have and also keeping them together with whatever you, you know, whatever little accessories they have. I usually am a purist, so it's mostly just the fig. And when it comes to the CMFs, for example, I definitely have all the uh, accessories it came with, with most of them. But that's pretty much the journey they've taken uh, once they come into my house. They get cleaned, they get sorted, they get identified, they get um, put together with the head or whatever other pants or whatnot belong to it. They get put into, you know, the original condition it was released in and then they get a baggie and a number and then they get put in uh, the specific bag they go into if they are not being uh, displayed. Uh, I will make a follow-up video on my display where I have a few hundred minifigs on display. I, again, I had to take that down, but I have a few photos which I'll show you right now. And that's how I uh, started at the beginning, just displaying them and, and having this really cool few hundred fix right above my computer. Um, I really love that and I'm hoping I can do that again. Um, and yeah, I mean, I hope this was helpful. This was the first little rundown. I'm happy to go a little more in depth in how to identify minifigs, but I'll do my best and throw in as many links as I can find of everything that I've been talking about. So you can uh, um, check that out and see if that maybe takes your collection to the next level and uh, you can start sorting it and maybe uh, keep track of what you have a little more. Because at some point you'll have more than you could remember or, you know, it, it just, for me, it was very helpful. I'm an old man, I guess, <laughs> but it was uh, a cool way for me to find out what I have. If I'm in the Lego store, sometimes I just have to really check and go on the phone on the brick link, uh, brick set page and just check do I already have it or not. And it was just a very helpful tool for me to, yeah, just be aware of, of, of what I have. That's pretty much it. Anyways, that's the insane collector. I'm out.